All right, hello, hello. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna go is I'm gonna go over the heart note. So keep in mind, you guys just um, get a chance. You just look at the blood. Hopefully you familiarize uh, with blood typing and what components are inside your blood, right? Um, so today we're gonna move on to the heart, the heart. So again, uh, we are still on the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system is um, heart, blood, and vessel, right? Those are the three things that make up the cardiovascular system. So today we're going to talk about pulmonary circuit and systemic circuit. Pulmonary circuit, pulmo mean lungs. This is the uh, vessel that bring blood to the lungs for exchange of gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide. Systemic is when blood vessel that carry blood back to the system, the body. Okay, that's the difference between you know your root word you can technically understand speaking of blood vessel right, blood are carry within blood vessel there are three type of blood vessel that we have you have the artery the vein and capillary and they are different in size and the direction artery carry blood away from the heart that means any type of blood doesn't matter if it's oxygenated or deoxygenated with oxygen or without oxygen it carry blood away from the heart. We call that artery. So away from the heart is artery. And vein, on the other hand, is the opposite. Carry blood back to the heart. So any type of blood go back to the heart. We call that vein. And then capillary would be these... Um, oop, my bad. Let me open this. And capillary would be like the, um, the blood vessel, the smallest blood vessel that is very thin. The layer is very thin, so this is where gas exchange, right? And you have you found them primarily in the surrounding cell and lungs, right? Very thin, so that way uh, gas can go through, right? Artery and vein, on the other hand, artery is thicker than vein, okay, and tend to be bigger. All right, we'll explain that why. So let's go over. So now you understand the blood vessel. Moving on. So this is what we have the pulmonary circuit and systemic circuit, right? You have the heart is like a pump. A job is to pump. It pump blood away from the heart. And then that blood will travel back to the heart. And then it go to the lungs and so on. Pulmonary is blood vessel that goes to the lung. And then you have capillary. That would be where the thin, small would be where it connects to cells and lungs and stuff to pass on the oxygen and collect back the carbon dioxide so you can breathe out. <clears throat> Speaking of the heart, so today I'll focus on the heart. This is your heart, right? We know our heart, right? Our heart is uh, slightly toward your left, not in the middle, slightly toward your left. The heart is divided into four um, chambers. You have atrium, right and left atrium, and right and left ventricle. Atrium would be the top part. This is right atrium, left atrium. By the way, we are looking at the heart. We're looking at the person right now. So this is the right side, right? Right side. And then left side. Right atrium, left atrium. And then you have the ventricle, the bigger chamber, left and right, okay? Of the heart. <clears throat> we'll talk about this. So the difference between Atrium and ventricle is divided by the septums right here. It's like the middle part, like a muscle divided. The right side, right atrium and right ventricle always carry deoxygenated blood. That means blood doesn't have a lot of um, um, oxygen. So what they do is they carry this deoxygenated blood and they bring it to the lungs because the lungs where you exchange carbon dioxide with oxygen. And the left side is what we call oxygenated blood. That means these blood will go to the rest of the body, wherever it needs the blood, okay? Divide by the septum. So keep that in mind, keep it simple. Right is deoxygenated, on the left side is oxygenated. Okay, so this is your heart. <clears throat> uh, not toward the middle, toward the left side a little bit, surrounded by your lungs, right? Seen within the um, thoracic, right? This is your diaphragm. Okay. Moving on. So your heart is surrounded by layers, right? We call that pericardium. It's like a double layer. Just imagine this is a balloon. 
You push your hand in, you create two layer, visceral and parietal. <clears throat> the inner layer is what we call the visceral. So this is the visceral layer. Visceral pericardium. <clears throat> and the outer layer is what we call the parietal. Parietal, peri, outside. Parietal, okay, I'll leave it there. All right, and that's so your heart is not just touching the lung, it is surrounded by layers. Okay. And this is your heart, right? Um, if we were still at school, we would have been doing dissection, heart dissection, sheep heart, but if only we didn't, couldn't, right? So your heart is very complicated, but we're going to simplify it. So again, it's surrounded by the pericardium, like a layer surround the heart. And now the amount of the heart. Let's take a look at the heart closely. Your heart, uh, again, divided by four chamber, right and left, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle. Anybody still remember um, right side of the heart always carry what type of blood? Oxygenated, deoxygenated, deoxygenated. So it carry to the to the to the lungs to pick up the oxygen. And left side always carry receive blood from the lung, and it has oxygen. Beside that, <clears throat> your heart also have what we call superior vena cava. Vena mean vein, right? Remember, vein always carry blood back to the heart. This is your superior vena cava on top. And then you also have inferior vena cava on the bottom. And they all carry the blood into the right atrium, right? It go in the right atrium, okay? And these are deoxygenated blood. It go through the what we call the atrioventricular valve or valve like openings. Have you ever been to the airport where you like a valve? The thing can go in, but you cannot go backward, right? So that's what a valve do. It makes sure blood do not backflow. You want to keep them one direction. You have the right atrioventricular. This is right here. Okay, what we call the tricuspid valve because it's made of three different layers, three different. So like three. One, two, and then there's a third one, three, opening. And then it's uh, held by the chordae tendinae, which is like the tendon that connect muscle. Um, <clears throat> muscle to, um, uh, bone to muscle, but in this case, uh, the valve to the muscle, right here. Um, and then this blood are then pumped. Remember the oxygenated blood? It then pump through what we call the Again, this is not same as a picture, but you can see, right? Um, <clears throat> septum is humongous. The atrium is somewhere here, atrium. And this is the vent ventricle, okay? Right. Corda tendine. So again, um, blood, let me move this. So blood travel uh, back to the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava, which is the vein. It pick up blood throughout the body and bring it back to the heart. And then it go through the uh, AV, right? By the way, it's not, uh, let me draw it right, right here. That's it, it doesn't go through there. And it go through the tricuspid valve and then you get then passed on through what we call the pulmonary valve. This is the valve that control blood to the pulmonary area, which is the lung. So this blood will then travel to the left. And then it also, <clears throat> this one, it has a tube here that travel to the right lung, right? There you go. Right. So travel, right atrium, left, right uh, ventricle to the right side and the left side, left lung. <clears throat> and then the lung will be a place where this blood will drop off the carbon dioxide. Remember the, the graph? The more carbon dioxide there are, <clears throat> the chance that it will pick up carbon dioxide, the chance it will pick up oxygen is less. Since there's not a lot of carbon dioxide in the lung, so carbon dioxide will leave the lung. And since there's a lot of oxygen, so it pick up oxygen. And then it will travel through um, what we call the left, um, <clears throat> right and left pulmonary vein. P 
pulmonary vein because it's from the lung. Pulmonary vein. Okay. And pulmonary vein. So bring blood back to the lung, uh, back to the heart. And then they travel, and these are oxygenated blood. It go through what we call the mitral valve, uh, only two, or bicuspid valve. Okay. And then it will go through the largest artery in our body, the aorta, or the, in this case, uh, the aorta artery, which in turn bring to different part of your body and descending aorta as well. So it bring blood, oxygenate blood to the rest of your body. So simplify this. <clears throat> Ox the oxygenated blood go to your right atrium, left, uh, uh, right ventricle, to the lungs, left and right. And then from the lung, it go to the left atrium, left ventricle, and to the aorta. So then the rest of your body have blood. So the view of the heart, so check it out, and now the heart. So again, this is the difference between um, um, tricuspid and bicuspid, right? So your uh, tricuspid is between your left, I mean your right and right atrium and right ventricle. And then this is pulmonary semilunar valve. And then bicuspid would be between the left. And so make sure you study this part, okay? <clears throat> um, and then your heart is a muscle. So it also has what we call the uh, artery, even though it's called coronary artery. It is called coronary artery, even though it's head back to the heart. But again, these are tubes that bring oxygen to the heart. So we call them artery. Yes, I understand that usually vein is head back to the heart, artery away. But in this case, these are the artery that bring oxygen to the heart. It doesn't go inside the chamber or anything. It just stay around. Okay? And this is where heart attack take place. If your artery is blocked, your coronary artery cannot bring oxygen to the heart, so you have heart attack. Different from stroke. Stroke is for the brain, no oxygen to the brain. Right? Check this out. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about how your heart beats. Your heart beats because the valve, remember the left, the tricuspid and bicuspid, close, lub, open, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub, open and close. Your heartbeat starts from what we call the SA node. It's like what we call the pacemaker. Remember some people that their pacemaker does not work, they have to wear an uh, electronic pacemaker. This is where right here. It all starts here. This is where it starts the beats. It then travels through the AV node. Right? It will squeeze the, the atrium. Squeeze it. Blood will go into the left, I mean the ventricle. And then the signal will then travel through the what we call the Purkinje per, per, per fiber, which squeeze the heart from bottom up, so blood can go through the lungs or to the rest of the body. Make sense? So, <clears throat> so heart beats from this point, it squeezes the ventricle, both left and right. And from this point, it will travel down Purkinje fiber, which then squeezes the bottom of the heart to push blood to the lung or to the aorta, to the rest of the body, right? Go back to the circulation that we just talked about. So review this part. Okay. We're gonna talk about ECG or EKG. You often hear EKG, but ECG is the correct term. It's what we call electrocardiogram. And this is when you often see movie, you see like a heartbeat machine to show you heartbeats. And that's because it follow how the heart um, beats. <clears throat> so, when our heart is not beating, it's to go through what we call resting potential, just kind of like muscle or nerve. It will gradually polarize, become more positive. And then, SA no, the first one, remember SA no, the top, it will get depolarized to start to create heartbeats. And then, then pass on to the AV node and then the Purkinje fiber to squeeze the blood. So like this, right? So review this side, SA no. 
it will then pass on, will stimulate the AV node to, to squeeze. From the AV node, it then pass on to Purkinje fiber, right, which squeeze blood up. So check this out. Moving on, um, we're going to talk about uh, EKG, ECG, because your worksheet involved with that. Um, so pacemaker is your SA node, which is your <clears throat> sinoatrial node. When it's not working right, it creates a, a wrong rhythm. It's what we term bradycardiac or tachycardiac. Brady means slow. That means your SA no is too slow. Heartbeat are not the right pace. Tachycardiac means your heartbeat too fast, on the other hand. Tachy. So keep that in term. <clears throat> and then you also have uh, ectopic pacemaker. Um, when it generates high rate of action potential, be too, too extremely uh, not normal. Okay. So let's talk about our, our ECG. We look at a machine. How do we know how heartbeat? Keep this letter in mind, PQRST. When you look at in the movie, fat line when they don't have the heartbeats. But when they do have a heartbeat, it goes through what we call P, P wave, Q, R, S, T. So what does P wave mean? P wave means the atria depolarized, the atrium. The atrium right here, it depolarized. It beats, it squeezes, it works. And then QRS is when your ventricle depolarizes. So QRS is when your ventricle, you need to squeeze blood out of the heart. Atrium squeeze blood into the ventricle. So depolarization is very strong. And then you have the T way, <clears throat> which is when your ventricle repolarize, it go back to normal. Because you, you want blood from the vent, the atrium to go back to ventricle. You don't want. So that's what we call PQRST. So don't forget to look at this. Okay. And then we'll go over it on um, Wednesday or any other day you have question on. So let's create what we call like your heartbeat, your pacemaker, your ECG, electrocardiogram or EKG. Q and T is where your um, interval of your ventricle. So this is your atrium, and this whole part is your ventricle. All right. <clears throat> Same thing, right? Um, a heartbeat. This is your heartbeat, right? This is when your ventricle beat, and then this would be uh, relaxed, and this is when your um, atrial uh, beats. <clears throat> Delay a little bit so that way you allow all the blood to go in. And this is when your ventricle squeezes the blood out. Um, your heart will go through two phases. Right? You guys did uh, CPR, you measure the pulse. You go through what we call systole and diastole. Right? Some of you guys are pretty good at this because you're in CNA training. Systole is when your heart contract. You have atrial systole or atrial diastole, and diastole when your heart relaxed, it's not squeezing. Systole, and you have ventricle, systole, ventricle, diastole. It's like this, right? Atrial systole, ventricular systole, and then you have diastole when it relaxed. Uh, talk about heart. So, which one has stronger uh, count, right? Systole, because Create more pressure. Diastole when it relaxes so lower number. Um, this is how we measure blood pressure, right? How strong the heart squeeze. Top number, higher number, lower number. Normal would be around 120 uh, pressure. It would be around 80. Elevate. So check this out, okay? So uh, people that normal around 120, uh, 80, right? Depend normal people. If you're not athlete or anything. You have high blood pressure, you're 130, you're it's too strong, right? The pressure is too strong, it might make the vet blood vessel burst. So that's why you have to be careful. I'll leave it here. And this combine everything, right? Heartbeat, ventricular, and electrocardiogram. So check it out. I want to keep this short, so please leave a note. If you have any questions, let me know. All right. Bye-bye.